But you talk very interestingly about how the prime minister has converted the loan, you know, the image of loneliness of being solitary into political into a political asset. And there's this one image you talk about of him meditating. Uh, there's that image, uh, the, 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 you know, this meditative image of the prime minister as an example of how he has channeled an essential loneliness of being the Indian prime minister, which each of them has felt at different stages into political advantage. Explain that. You know, every prime minister has, several prime ministers talk to me about loneliness. And it's a question I ask them. That it is very lonely at the top. The buck stops with you. Ultimately, yes. you take decisions that are going to affect millions of people. But Narendra Modi is one who turned it into an asset. Hmm. You know, it's a it's an image of mehuna. Hmm. Rely on me. And when he, it's, it's always struck me when he comes down the plane, Air India One, you'll find yeah. nobody behind him. Normally, you have officials or other ministers coming down, always alone. In front mm. of Sardar Patel's statue, alone. In a train in Japan, alone. In the Kedarnath cave, alone. So he wants to reinforce this. I'm alone there, but I'm yeah. there for you. You know, optics is very important for Narendra Modi. He's been a master at political marketing. Of course, he's used technology, new media, free data, all, all that very skillfully. Uh, but uh, this thing just yes, stands out. Nehru used it, the loneliness, to write his autobiography, the many, many books that he wrote in jail. But Narendra mm. Modi has used it very differently. You, you have said, uh, I think, to the Indian Express that Modi is a phenomena of a changing India that we don't fully understand, that Modi as a phenomena is difficult right now to explain, even for the most erudite, experienced political observers. Uh, you know, I, I sometimes feel that uh, Barkha, of course, he stands for the, uh, for the Hindu, Hindutva. Uh, uh, he stands for nationalism, national pride. He stands for social welfareism. He's <clears throat> of a kind not seen before for a long time. Of course, the UP also did it, but they have taken it to next step. He stands for OBC empowerment, OBC prime minister. He stands for, you know, the communities out there, the lower, so-called the lower down communities coming through the ranks and making it to the top position, what I call the subalternization of India. Mm -hmm. he, he has, but he also stands, for, I think somewhere he recognizes the aspirational India. You know, the small town India, the big village India identifies with him. We can also make it big. They have big dreams that he uh, talks about. He doesn't talk about doom and gloom. But somewhere yeah. I feel it's all. I, 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 I think you mentioned that whatever he does has to be on a big scale. Bhavya hona The word he used was bhavya. Everything yeah. has to be planned. We, why don't we think big? Now, sometimes the big decisions lack the detailing as we demonetization. Uh, but yeah. I think uh, uh, it, he, res res he resonates with an India changing. And that India and how it's changing, I think we have to probably understand a little more of. I want to so end. Going to the field and you, you go into the field. That is what we try and pick up. Well, you know, in the field, they tell you they love the fact that the prime minister is a bachelor prime minister without children because they think that equals non-corruption. So many people in the field have told me this, that unka to koi hai nahi chhodne ke liye, to wo to hamare liye hi kar rahe hai. So it's very interesting that in America, for example, you need your president to be a family man or a family woman. But in India, there is a great amount of uh, sort of uh, laudits or plaudits as it were uh, for the single man or the single woman you know the element of renunciation but 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 Deja, let me end with uh, a story from your book where Karan Singh the veteran congress leader tells you that he believes that prime minister Modi despite the fact that the party rubbishes the Nehru legacy all the time that he uses not Indira but Nehru as a, as, as as a reference point so I want to end with that story uh, he says that Karan Singh told me that he may not he may not admit this, but I think 
Narendra Modi would like to be like Nehru and to surpass him. <laughs> what did you make of that analogy? Did you agree with it? Do you agree with it? It's worth studying. It's worth studying. Very interesting. Very interesting. And in fact, the images we're playing are off the Prime Minister's Museum. And you talk about how at the entrance, the two portraits that you saw, I think that's there in your book. One is of the first Prime Minister of Independent India and one is of the current. And that juxtaposition uh, uh, really captures uh, so much. Uh, Neerja Chaudhary, it's been fascinating. We could do this for hours, but time is up. Uh, the book is excellent. Uh, please do pick up, if you haven't already, Neerja Chaudhary's uh, book that takes a look at how the Prime Ministers of India take decisions. Uh, it's full of anecdotes, nuggets. Uh, even if you're not a journalist or you're not a politician, it's very accessible. It's 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 delicious. That is the word I would use for it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Neerja Chaudhary. Always a pleasure.